I'd appreciate it very much if you could, Sheriff. Very good. We'll be uh, looking for you. All right. Goodbye. What? The sheriff says uh, he's on his way. He's going to stop by and pick up Tom separately. Bring him along, too. He also said that there have been a number of break-ins in this area, particularly in these uh, isolated farmhouses where people can, you know, get in and out without being seen. This is also a very small town. News travels fast. Someone may have heard that uh, the Hampsteads had gone on a trip. I don't know when it could have happened, Ross. We just packed our things last night and left them in the master bedroom. Yeah, I know that, but honey, we spend more time out of this house than in it. Like this morning, we went on a walk. It took us three hours. I think that's when it happened, too. Honey, <clears throat> I'm just sorry that it happened the last day of our honeymoon here. Me too. I'm sure the Hempsteads were upset when they heard about it. Yes, well, uh, Elmer and Marjorie, they take everything pretty much in stride. Although they did ask me to check on the silverware and a few pieces of uh, jewelry that Marjorie left behind. They're still here. You know, they asked uh, also for Tom Sipperly. They asked me to arrange for Tom Sipperly to be here until they get back. So, I don't want you to think about it anymore. And when the sheriff leaves and Tom is here to keep an eye on the place, I want to go for a nice long walk and see these two acres that I'm now the owner of, along with you, where we're going to build our acre. This hasn't affected your feelings about this place? Of course not. Honey, I'm a lawyer. I hear about robberies and vandalism every day I walk into work. This is just an isolated incident that happened while we were here. That's it. That's how you have to think of it, too. I can't think of it that way, Ross. Somehow I think it's connected to everything else that's happened. What do you mean? All those things I can't remember. That person that I feel watching me. We are in rural Wisconsin. Those other things happened hundreds of miles from here. How could they possibly be related? I don't know. But you just keep telling me that they can, okay? Now, my little princess, I think we've spent enough time in our special room for this afternoon. I want to get you back to the library. And into your bassinet before your nosy mother comes home. No, Sam, listen. Come on, put your face up for this. I'm going to put your face if you go anywhere near that door. Now, she's going to come out here any second with the baby. All right, let's hide now. Go ahead. special place is still safe. This is to keep your nosy mother out. Come true, then go in there. 
That's a very selfish thing to say, Gracie. I'm not going to rest until I find out why she keeps dragging Kelly Louise up here. Now, wait a second, wait a second. We haven't heard the baby cry or anything, so I'm sure she's okay. I happen to think that Renfield really loves her and wouldn't do anything to hurt her. You're just saying that because you're scared. Why does she keep this door locked? And why does she keep dragging Kelly Louise up here only when I'm out of the house? No, no, it's got something to do with that dress that she made and that hat. You know what? I'm not gonna... I'm gonna tell Mom not to let Renfield near Kelly Louise while we're in London. Mm. <gasps> I just remembered that movie, Village of the Damned, with all those weird kids and their eyes and how they... Well, you just stop it! Stop it, Gracie! Oh. Now, come on, we're gonna even the score. I don't want it! Come on! I don't... No, this way. Just the room. Come on. Just a room. If it's Fritz's room, I'm sure it's really weird. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi, honey. Hi, baby. Oh, look. Just the door. Come on. Oh, look at all these pictures. Oh, come on, Gracie. Fritz is up here alone, except Mrs. Renfield down the hall. Yeah, well, I knew he was a dirty old man. I told you so, Nola. Grace, you know what? These pictures look like you. Bite your tongue. Come on, let's go. One of those weird pipes, you know, that you see in the movies and they all sit around and smoke opium in them? Oh, Gracie, it's just a water pipe like my Uncle George had. You know that. Oh, yeah. Well, your Uncle George was a weirdo, too. Oh, come on. I feel weird invading people's privacy. Come on. <laughs> That's a laugh. That's all you've been doing since you've been living... <gasps> Whips and chains! Gracie, you've got to get a hold of your imagination. Imagination? Nothing. I know what I'm seeing. That's a chain for the dogs. Frank takes them on a walk and that's a whip. He uses it to keep them in line. Oh, I'm getting the Come on. Let's get out of Open here. Open the door. Gracie, look at this. Look at that. Two Fritz love Mama. <laughs> oh, it looks just like Fritz with curls, even the glasses. Okay, that's a face only a son could love. Oh, boy, that's a treat. Come on, let's go. Okay, now leave the door partly open so it looks like the cat got out by himself. Oh, remember Oklahoma? Oklahoma? Yeah, poor Chad. He had a room just like that. He had all this weird You're stuff. He was really What's wrong with you? So I just came by to remind you that the next time I give you an order and you disobey it, Candy is going to find herself in an awful lot of trouble. No, I don't think so. Because I don't intend to take any more orders, Josh. Oh, then I, I guess you want Floyd to know the whole story, huh? You want me to tell him that he's involved with an ex-hooker? First of all, that isn't true. And second of all, I've done a lot of thinking. And I know you aren't going to Floyd to tell him anything. Really? Really? Would you like me to tell you why? I can't wait to hear. You had me panicked for a long time. In fact, last night when you ordered me in front of everyone to your hotel suite, I, um, I was still scared. I almost gave in until I went home and thought everything through. Really? And what did you think? I finally decided that you have probably just as much to lose as I do if you tell Floyd. <laughs> I'd like to know how you came to that conclusion. I know Floyd a lot better than you do, or ever will. And if you go to Floyd with that lie... Uh, number one, it's no lie. All Floyd has to do is go to the state penitentiary and, and find Andy Norris, and he'll explain the whole thing to him, I'm sure. <sighs> yes, he might just do that because Andy has as low an opinion of women as you do. He just used me. But to get back to the point, Floyd would never speak to you again if you heard him like that. Because unlike Andy, Floyd is very protective of me. Whatever else he might think, he knows that I love him. So if you go to him and tell him that whole story and he finds out how you were involved, You'll never want to have anything else to do with you. And you'll end up losing your only client just at the point he's on the verge of paying off. I think I'm beginning to know a little, little bit more about you, too, now. And I know that you're not managing Floyd's career out of any great love for Floyd. You're using him just like Andy used me. Because Floyd's your ticket out from under your father's thumb.
can hardly believe it. The great, fast-talking Josh Lewis doesn't have a comeback. Not even another threat. I just have one thing to say to you, Leslie. You are making a very big mistake. No, I don't think so. Because I think you're far too shrewd and selfish to risk losing Floyd right now. So no more threats, no more orders. I've just cut the strings. Sit down. I meant to, Josh. No more orders. All your little power plays are finally backfiring at last, including whatever you had to do with having Tony reared and quit his job. And I can't tell you how proud I am that Tony won that one. I'm feeling better about myself now than I did ever since that awful night I left your hotel suite, so humiliated and degraded. I'll never again. Leslie Ann. Uh, please tell Floyd that Kelly will send my love when you see him. Yeah. Okay. I will, Morgan. See you, Kelly. Okay. I don't know what to say. Josh! I thought you were suddenly becoming unfriendly. Walk right past, not even say hello to her. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry about that, Morgan. I just had some uh, business to discuss with Leslie Ann about Floyd. Uh, I guess I was concentrating on it. Hi, hi Kelly. Josh. Well, I don't know what your business was about, but you certainly look a little deflated. Yeah, a little, but, uh, but I'll bounce back. Oh, your mom told me that you got the proof sheets here. They look, yeah. look terrific. Well, some of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember when this one was taken. <laughs> Listen, I have to talk to Derek Colby about uh, drawing up another contract for me and Floyd. How about if I have him draw up another contract with you and, uh, and I can be your manager? I'm afraid you're a little late for that, Josh. Uh, she's already signed an exclusive six-month contract with Brisson with possible extension. That's okay. I'll just let Brisson do all the legwork and make you a star, and then uh, we'll talk about a real contract. Well, Josh, if having a contract with you means I have to be ordered around like you do with Floyd and Leslie Ann, no thanks. I'll stay with Mr. Brisson. Yeah, well, some days you just can't win for losing, you know? I'll talk to you later. Josh is incredible. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. But after I'd made that suggestion to Alan, I really felt like I'd gone much too far. I had no idea what you were going to propose to Alan to try to repair his relationship with Amanda, but... I think it was very nice of you to want to make a suggestion like that, that you cared enough. I can't begin to tell you how much I'd like to see Amanda pull herself up out of the situation she's struggling against now. There was a time in my life, and... Not too very long ago, either, when I felt like the whole world was crashing in around me. I couldn't trust in or believe in anyone. So I know how that pain feels. You see, if I were, if I were Alan, I'd, I'd sign over those stocks to Amanda just to, just to make her know that if she trusts people again, she, she won't be hurt. Mark, you know, you have made... You have done more to help Amanda than anyone I know. I see signs of it every day. I'm not nearly as worried about her as I have been. Well, if that's true, I couldn't be happier. It is. Good. Oh, my goodness. You know, we've, we've been talking for half an hour. Every really? That's incredible. I have no idea. Well, I didn't either. I guess it's because it's so easy to talk to you. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you. But, you know, I'm still supposed to come up with a single proposal out of all these facts and figures, and all I've got is a list of recommendations that's out of control. I think Amanda's going to fire me this time for sure. <laughs> In school, did you ever ask anybody to help you out with a composition? Uh, no, not quite. Um, but I remember copying the answers to a science quiz from a boy who was, oh, God, he was a real genius and uh, getting an A-plus in a subject I knew nothing about. <laughs> Why do you ask? Well, no, I'm not asking you to do anything unethical, mind you, but if you'd ha uh, let me have a look at that with a fresh eye, I'd probably be able to come up with that single proposal you're looking for. Are you serious? Sure. I'd be eternally grateful. Besides, it's much better than having you fired. Have a look. <laughs> That's true. Here you go. Okay. 